From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I have some startling headlines for you today. The first one is a question. Are terrorists winning? Mm. And National Day of Prayer ruled unconstitutional. Can you believe that one? And Netanyahu vows no Jerusalem split. He's made up his mind. But before we get into all of these headlines, I just want to make reference to something that my heart feels so very, very strongly about. We need to be praying for all of our young men and women, wherever they are around the world, as they defend democracy. How grateful I am for my country. We've been in 50 countries, and every time I come back to my country, the USA, I want to get out of that plane and kiss the ground. I love my country and I praise God so much for our freedom, our blessings here. And I thank God for all of those who gave their lives, men and women, that we might enjoy our wonderful, wonderful USA. Jack, I know you feel the same. Oh, Rexella, my parents came from Belgium, but the happiest day in their lives was that hour when they became American citizens. We are Belgian Americans. Thank God for this great nation. Oh, yes. And for the men who I'll die to give us that freedom. Amen, that's for sure. Well, friends, one of the worst disasters in the history of our country is the terrible heavy oil gushing into the Gulf of Mexico. Let's take a look at this. More oil than estimated is gushing into the Gulf, more than they thought. Once again, officials say 600 animal species threatened by this oil spill. Think of all those who are in danger. And U.S. stocks tumble on worries about Europe, all oh, the investors are really, really concerned. And the problem banks up to 775, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation listed a total of 775 banks or roughly 10% of the U.S. industry as problem institutions. That is really yeah, something. Hundreds have already failed before that. Yes, Jack. Are the terrorists winning? Now, this is an article by Bob Beckel and Cal Thomas, and they say we can't let fear and a bunker mentality become the new normal in America, Bob and Cal say. What can we do? Put on the unwelcome mat for countries that look the other way on terrorism. And we know who they are. And the Wall Street Journal, once again, top spymaster asked to resign. Whoa, he was asked for his resignation. Cyber attack. Oh, we've talked about this. Could fell U.S. within 15 minutes. Now, here's one from the World Net Daily. EMP, that is the electromagnetic pulse, could leave 9 out of 10 Americans dead. Get that percentage? 9 out of 10. Well, I'm going to ask Jack a very serious question. All the things that we've been considering here with these headlines, are they found in the Bible? Let's take the first three. The oil spill, the financial disaster, and terrorists winning in the Bible, Jack? Rexel, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal this morning that shocked me. They said if this thing would go as far as 10 plumes in the ocean, it could destroy all living creatures in the seas of this world. And you know that happens during the tribulation hour? 
of Revelation chapter 6 to 18, that seven-year period. And Revelation 16, 3 tells us that every living creature in the sea died. And now they say this is the beginning of what could become a possibility. And then secondly, we have all these banks failing. We're in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. And again, during the tribulation hour in Revelation chapter 18, verse 17 says, For in one hour so great riches has come to naught. Week after week, you hear me talking about terrorism. Jesus in Matthew 24, 37 said, As the days of no were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Just before I return, there'll be mass terrorism because it's like Noah's day. And in Noah's day, the world was filled with violence. Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. And then this man has just been released. A great man, Dennis Blair. And you know what I think is the truth behind it all? He was beginning to talk against the Muslims and what they're doing in this country. And you get silenced in a hurry for that. Mm -hmm. God help America. Whoa, well, the terrorists are something that we certainly need to be concerned about. And then the other two headlines, I could not get over this, a cyber attack. Do you know the devastation that it could have in 15 minutes? across our country and then of course the electromagnetic uh, pulse nine out of ten americans dead oh i can hardly believe that jack but is that in the bible also oh it really is rexel and all these things i've already said and repeat now happen just before christ returns to earth to set up his one thousand year kingdom on earth revelation 20 verse 4 but we're gone seven years sooner in the rapture when he says, come up hither. So it's all so near. Now, the cyber system is when they destroy the communication system of our country so that the military have no idea how they're to operate. The bank systems fail. They don't know who has the money, where it is. Mass confusion. And China, Russia, and America can do this to one another. But then you've heard me many times talk about the electromagnetic pulse. If a ship at sea, 200 miles from our shores, for that has to be the boundary, shoots an atomic missile into space 300 miles above one of our major cities, Washington, D.C., or another, it can blot out everything from coast to coast, including Canada and Mexico. Total darkness from that as well as what the cyber effect could have. And now they have no means of running the electronic equipment. There's no heating. There is no cooling system. The trucks, won't, cars won't work. The trains, what a mess. And isn't that exactly what the Bible describes in Matthew 24, 29? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. And you see it again in Revelation 6, 12. I beheld with open the sixth seal, and there was a great shaking, a great earthquake. And the earth became filled with darkness. These two things could do it. But it shocks me, and this hurts. Nine out of ten could die. Yes. Probably a starvation because they can't transport the goods. Oh, Jack, We're in is. trouble. Could some of these things happen because we have this bunch of atheists and others right now who want to get rid of prayer day? They want to get rid of everything that is religious, anything that has to do with Christ. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations who forget God, the Proverbs tell us. There's only one hope, ladies and gentlemen, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We've got 1% of the population, atheists, trying to do this. You'll hear more about it in a moment. God help America. We're in trouble. Oh, Jack, that's very, very, very serious. And here, rules for pro-American radicals. And uh, this is uh, from the whistleblower. And they say, decent Americans everywhere are shocked at the intimidation tactics being widely used by the administration from the top down to roll our mainstream American citizens and transform their nation into another socialist state where real liberty is just a memory. Whoa, that is really powerful. 
And then secrets from inside the Obama war room. Who is he talking He's to? He's going after the military now. And here you see it, General McChrystal. In a cold fury, Obama said he wanted to know here and now if the Pentagon could faithfully implement any presidential decision. Whoa. I'll tell you, our president says he's a Christian. And I've heard this, but you know, if I had been at Saddleback that day, when he and McCain were asked about being Christians and they both said yes, I would have put down some rules. We've had one candidate during that time who said, yes, I'm a Christian, but not a born again one. You can't be a Christian unless you're born again. You don't believe that? Then you're calling Jesus a liar for he's the only one who used the language in John chapter 3. Verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 7, you must, you must be born again. Now, what is so hard about that? Everyone thinks you're a fanatic if you say, I'm a born again Christian. What does it mean? It takes an act of love between a man and a woman to produce a child. It takes an act of love from God to produce one of his children. What is that act of love? Calvary. And what happens when you pray that prayer, John 1, 12, as many as receive Jesus to them, ha, <laughs> ha, gave God power to become sons and daughters. If you're a son or daughter, you've had a birth. You cannot be a Christian without being born again. Don't you dare put my Savior on the spot by saying you don't believe him. But there's more to it. I would have asked them, all right, you say you're a Christian, prove it. What are the effects in your life? My Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We're raised to newness of life. We begin to act differently, live differently, talk differently, even smell differently. We don't hang around the bars anymore. Amen. Whoa, that's Not right. only that, Rexella, but Paul could say in 1 Timothy 1, 12, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, persecutor, injurious. Ha, ah, but I obtained mercy. There is a change. And you know, Barack, you've been talking about change, change, change. Let's see some of it in your daily walk. Now, here's the problem. Jesus speaking, this people honor me with their lips but their hearts far from me, Mark 7, 6. You are they which justify yourselves before men by what you say, but God knows your heart, Luke 16, 15. They profess that they know God, but in works, daily living, they deny Him being abominable, disobedient and unto every good work reprobate, counterfeit, hypocritical. Now, you have this spirit where you get hard with people. Look what you've done to the bank executives to the car dealers. There's no end to it. And now the military laying the law down or else. Look what you've done to the Republicans and the Tea Party people, even going as far as having Sister Pelosi calling them the Nazis. What kind of language is this for Christian people? And she supposedly a good Catholic, even though she doesn't uphold what her church teaches. I'm speaking from my heart, believe me. I'm not political, I'm religious. And I'm gonna speak about religion right now. Listen, here's the sign of a Christian. Jesus said in John 13, 35, by this shall all men know you are my disciples because you have love, love for one another. Jesus said five times, love your neighbor as yourself. In Matthew 19, 19, chapter 23, verse 29. In Mark chapter 12, verses 31 and 33. And then in Luke 10, 27. And Paul defined what it meant. In Romans 13, 11, he says, Love works no ill, no harm to his neighbor. Oh, I wish we could see more of that in America right now. The only one to whom you're being lenient is the Muslim crowd, those who've murdered so many of our people here and abroad. They're complaining from one end of the world to the other that so many Christians are being killed in these nations. Right now in Egypt, the only job a Christian can get is a garbage collecting job, and then he has to go to the rubbish dumps. That's all they've been able to get, ever. Religious freedom. Listen to me, I want to say one more thing right now. We've got to change our vocabulary. The real 
fruit of a Christian is not me, you. Do it. Even to Netanyahu, you embarrassed horribly the prime minister of Israel. As you said, you must not build further. You know what I read this week? The Palestinians are crying to say, we're doing the building for the Jews. Now we can't make a living for our families because of what Washington is doing. Whoa. Wow, think of that once. Netanyahu, you take orders or we'll withhold money. I want a two-state solution and I want to give Jerusalem to the Muslims, to the Arabs. Even though this book, and you're going to hear about it in a minute, 930 times says it belongs to Israel and the Jews. You know what I think? Talking to a lot of my Democratic friends now, and I've voted for all parties. Proverbs 15.1, a soft answer turns away wrath with grievous words stir up anger, and it's coming. Two years ago, we had 149 militias. 24 months later, we have 519 people are afraid. Boy, do we need to pray. Mm. Trouble's coming. Oh, yes, we do need to pray. And I, could I just add one thing to what Jack said? I'll never forget the day that my life turned around. I was just such a good church member, but that's all. I love to go to church, but that was all. I knew all about the Lord, but that was all. I didn't really have Him. How grateful I am for that day that I opened my heart to Him. I was 17, and He really came into my life, and then I knew Him. My whole life was changed. That's what, Jack, you were just talking oh, about, wasn't it? definitely, Rexa, yes. When you say born again, it's a spiritual experience. Yeah. And so many Christians mocked that terminology. Then you're mocking Jesus. No one else talked about it. Talking about Christians. I didn't know this, but it's happening worldwide. Quite a persecution. But are Christians facing opposition and having problems right here in the United States? Right here. Are we facing something? I was shocked at what happened in the Mojave Desert. You've got to see vandals tear down cross that justices would not now. Our Justice Department said, no, we're going to leave it stand. It stood there for 75 years in honor of our boys who gave their lives for America. And the vandals went and tore it down. Here you see a school. What's happening in our schools? Prayer kicked out. Bible kicked out. And all right, what's coming in? Dope, anarchy, and strikes. Once again, justices joust over Christian groups rights. Once again, oh my, oh my, Port Wentworth, Nix's prayer for senior citizen center now because of the uproar, they said, oh no, no, we are going to have prayer, even though we do get some support from the federal government. And National Day of Prayer ruled unconstitutional. Whoa, it took courage for Franklin Graham to criticize Islam. That's talking about Islamic terrorists that he criticized after 9-11. And Day of Prayer divides some. Franklin Graham wants Obama to intervene at Pentagon Day of Prayer, the day event. Now we need prayer, friends, don't we? Jack, you know, uh, things are happening here Lord. with the Christians in America. When Barbara Crabb says we are going to do away with the day of prayer. It's unconstitutional. And Annie Gaylor, who is the head of Freedom From Religion, says we are atheists. We don't want it. And the honorary board member is Ronald Reagan Jr. God help his father, who's probably weeping in heaven right now because of his son. We're in real trouble. And believe me, it's all coming because there's going to be death and persecution for the name of Christ in Revelation 6, verse 9, chapter 13, verse 15, chapter 20, verse 4. And that's after the rapture. We're going to escape a lot of it. But listen to me again, folks. The thing that bothers me the most is we have a president who says there are many ways to heaven. We don't need Jesus. It doesn't matter. Jesus said in John 8, 24, you die in your sins if you believe not in me. And said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man, no man can come unto the Father but by me. Don't call my Jesus a liar. Will you accept the Lord as your Savior? You know, every child is saved. Every single child in the world up to about the age of 12 saved. But when you have an adult making a decision, you must make that decision for yourself. Say, yes, I want the Lord. I want to be saved. Oh, Jack, give us that wonderful invitation right and now. And listen to me. I'm not only talking to those who say there are many other ways. 
in the secular world, but to you 56% of the evangelicals who are so brainwashed that there are many ways to heaven, I'm telling you now, you will not be there. 1 John 5, 12, he who has the Son, Jesus, has life. He who does not have the Son, Jesus, does not have life, abundant life or eternal life. You're going to be lost. So I'm asking you to trust in the only Savior now. And I make no bones about saying it. His name is Jesus. Look at me, Lord Jesus. God in human flesh. Oh, how you agonized as you died for my sin, my sin. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I accept your sacrifice for me. Come into my heart. Save me now. In your holy name, Jesus, I pray this. Amen. Amen. Oh, I love it. I was praying for you. I trust that you prayed that prayer with Jack. If you did, write to me, and there is my address. I'll send you absolutely free the soul book, the first steps in a new direction. I was talking to a lady today, and she said, Oh, Rexella, my son's on drugs. He can't get out. You know how you can get out of anything? If you have the Lord in your life, he will guide you out, and he will be your Savior now and your Savior forever. He'll give you peace now and take you home to heaven one day. Well, write to me, First Steps in a New Direction. It'll be in the mail as soon as I hear from you. Well, you know, we have a wonderful offer for you. Bob, would you please tell them how they can receive it? To order your copy of the book, God's Good Plan, with the bonus DVD, Terrorism Accelerating But Peace Coming, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, one 800 JVI 7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. Please order God's Good Plan because we are also going to be enclosing in an extended DVD that you will want because we are giving more information. And now, friends, I just want to say this was certainly a powerful program. Jack, thank you so very, very much. You know, it's wonderful that you give us the Bible. We don't get the Bible enough in our churches. We don't get the Bible enough, perhaps even in our personal lives. We need to take time to read the Bible. Thank you so much for giving Amen. us the Amen. Word of God in reference to what's happening in our world. And he's been talking a lot about prayer. Did you notice? I want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful thought. Life is fragile. Handle with prayer. Oh, how we need to be coming before the Lord every single day, asking Him to guide us, asking Him to bless our country, asking Him to guide our rulers that we may lead a peaceable and quiet life. Jack, I know you quoted that verse so very, very many times to us in days gone by. We need to pray for our rulers so that we can have a peaceable life. First Timothy 2 1. There you go, <laughs> the Bible. We'll look forward, friends, to being in your home again next week. And until then, please remember God cares for you, and so do we so very, very much. Bye bye. <laughs>